Hi, I'm Buzz Burbank, and you're watching Mr. Media. Today on Mr. Media, I'll talk to Buzz Burbank, the longtime Don and Mike show newsman who just launched his own podcast, Buzz Burbank News and Comment. Stick around, because I'm no Buzz Burbank. So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is a Mr. Media interview, brought to you by Amazon.com, Audible.com, and 1-800-DIAL-DJs. Please stop by the website, MrMedia.com, click on our advertisers, support the show. And remember, there's more than a thousand interviews available at MrMedia.com. We've been doing this since February 2007. Hope you'll find something you like. And thanks for listening. Mr. Media is recorded live before a studio audience consisting of Don Geronimo, Mike O'Mara, Rob Spiewak, Joe Ardinger, Tom Gavin, and Dennis Murphy holograms in the new new media capital of the world, <laughs> St. Petersburg, Florida. In San Francisco, Bay Area rapid transit officials are looking for a couple who had intercourse on a seat on a BART train. The cops are forced to keep watching the video over and over in an effort to identify the suspects. If caught, the couple could be banned from riding the train ever, ever again. And in other news... Buzz Burbank is back, everybody. <laughs> I recognize those words. Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm good. good I'm good. You. Good to talk with you. Good to talk to you. Um, the long, the longtime newsman and fixture of the syndicated Don and Mike show obviously is here with us. He's I'm a, a fixture. He's a fixture. He, well, he's, been, he's unfixed, I guess, now. I, that doesn't make any sense. And Buzz has resurfaced as his own man and host of the podcast, Buzz Burbank News and Comment. It's everything fans always enjoyed, relevance and irrelevance, stately and silly, but now roughly five times as long. <laughs> Buzz, and no, that isn't his real name, but who cares, was always the voice of reason on the Don and Mike show, especially when Don's relative straight man, Mike, went too far out to fit the role. <laughs> now, he always presented real news, but there was always a twist. Not a less Nesman-like twist, na you know, naive <laughs> twist, as in WKRP in Cincinnati, yeah, more like a combination, I'd say, of uh, Robin Quivers providing comment on stories to Howard Stern, with sort of George Carlin serving up the day's factoids and a wink of irony. Mm -hmm. uh, not to mention sounding sometimes a little like uh, Stephen Colbert's uh, trademark truthiness. <laughs> now, when the Don and Mike show ended in 2008, Buzz followed Mike O'Mara to podcasting and was a staple of his show for four right. years, walking away from it very recently, May 20th, 2013. Now, just a few weeks later, Buzz launched Buzz Burbank News and Common. I just like to say that. <laughs> which is heard at buzzburbank.com and on iTunes, which brought him, well, here. <laughs> Hi, Bob. <laughs> hey. Now, I know a lot of Mr. Media viewers and listeners might not know Buzz Burbank or even the Don and Mike show, but it was must-hear afternoon listening for me for years. That is, whenever the local Tampa Bay radio station would put it on. The leads on the show had a sometimes ugly on-and-off relationship with the local CBS station that carried them here, so there are, to be honest, some big gaps in my listenership, sadly. <laughs> now, a lot of broadcast newscasters have been guests on this show, including Bob Schieffer, Lester Holt, and of course ah. the O'Brien twins, Miles and Soldad. But none of them brought the equivalent heft of today's Man of the Quarter Hour. Buzz Burbank, welcome to Mr. Media. Well, that's very kind. What a great introduction, Bob. Thank you for that, and thank you for having me. Well, Good to be here. It, delighted to have you. Years of enjoyment catching those moments from you. Um, <laughs> So, Buzz, uh, free at last? Free at last? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's a real danger in that. You know, it's like a little bird leaving the nest, isn't it? You know, there's some risk involved with that. Uh, I've compared uh, leaving uh, that particular nest, in this case, the Mike O'Mara Show podcast, uh, to jumping out of a perfectly good airplane. Um, uh, it, there, there was no reason to do it other than to fly on my own and uh, with some, at some risk. Uh, but but uh, so far, so good, and I'm enjoying it immensely. You know, for 22 years, I've been riding on the back of somebody else's cart, and uh, it was a great ride. It really was, because I got to 
be at the heart of things in the heyday of Guy Talk Radio, mm -hmm. uh, to be on the Don and Mike show on WJFK, uh, syndicated around the country. Uh, uh, this was before Janet Jackson's nipple appeared. <laughs> Uh, and and uh, it was a it was a different time and a great time it was. I am so proud and so glad to have been a part of that. Uh, obviously, there've been a lot of changes since then, and everybody trying different things. And I you know I love Mike and Rob and everybody, and and it's hard to leave your family. But uh, like I said, I needed to do something on my own, and I had reached the stage in my life where I felt this was a, a risk I could afford to take, and uh, so take it I did, and uh, I couldn't be happier. I'm enjoying uh, what I'm doing immensely. I love to write and uh, and then read what I've written. Uh, and uh, so I'm, I'm just, a, although it, it is, as you said, what uh, several times longer, three or four times longer, actually. But but uh, that means writing three or four times the material. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's quite a chore, actually. But one I enjoy because I do enjoy writing so much. So, yeah, it's, it's so far it's worked out very well. I'd just like to point out that all I had to say was free at last, and Buzz, with his new freedom, was able to talk for, <laughs> I don't know, 10, 15 minutes. That's pretty good. Yeah, I, I, I realized in the middle of that answer that something had gone too far, but I figured out I'm on a roll. I may as well try to cover the rest of it. So. No restraint. That's fine. That's nope. absolutely There's fine. There's still plenty to talk about, so hopefully I've not ruined it. No, 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 no. I, I, I assume that you were pretty much prepared for the question of why did you leave the, the O'Mara show, which is where I was going to eventually get to. Right. So why right. did you leave the O'Mara show? <laughs> <laughs> well, like I said, I really it, to try something on my own, to see if I could do something on my own. And also, uh, it, there was a tremendous time commitment involved with uh, TMOS, as there is with what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. The difference is what I'm doing here, I can control the time a little better. Uh, and uh, this uh, ability to control the time will allow me to pursue other projects that I didn't have time for, would not have had time for, if I'd stayed where I was and uh, uh, working on a number of projects in television, uh, other podcasting projects. And uh, I, as you know, I do, as you may know, I also do voiceover work, commercials and the like. Uh, I hope to do more of that. And uh, I, I just like having this freedom of sort of deciding day to day what it is I want to do and doing what I want to do. Uh, and and uh, yeah, so that's that's really the, the reason for leaving was to have the freedom to do those things, uh, staying just w as much as I wanted to, as hard as it was to leave. You know, I tried to leave a year ago, mm -hmm. uh, and and they convinced me to stay, which was very easy to do because it was my family, it was my friends asking me to stay. Well, it's it's not hard to say yes to that, so I did. Uh, but I realized a year later that I wasn't I wasn't getting around to some of those things that I'd hoped that I would do. So uh, this is allowing me to do that. So if, if Buzz Burbank was able to break away from the Don and Mike show, the Michael Mara show, uh, next year are we looking at the Rob Spiewak show? Is that where we're heading with this? <laughs> I don't know. That'll be up to every individual <laughs> involved. I think they're pretty happy where they are, and I'm pretty happy where I am. And, you know, that's the important thing. And really, that's all I want is for everybody to be happy and do what they want to do. And, and uh, likewise, I, I want the same thing for myself. No disrespect to Rob, by the way. <laughs> none, 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 none taken, none taken. <laughs> well, it's easy for you not to take. <laughs> well, no, he's, he's, he's got a pretty thick skin. I know, I know he's a good sport and uh, would, would agree with that answer. Well, so uh, the Buzz Burbank brand has basically existed for some time. It's, as, mm -hmm. as I mentioned, I mean, it's, you, are, you were not born Buzz Burbank. You've created this, this identity over the years. Uh, people, people who know the Don and Mike show, the Michael Mara show, they mm -hmm. know Buzz Burbank. But it still takes a little bit of bravery, you know, to step out there on your own and call something the Buzz Burbank anything. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what kind of feedback are you getting at this point? Are you getting the recognition you hope for in terms of people going, uh, people, oh, my God, it's people, Buzz? People are asking me to stop. <laughs> 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 no, 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 they, no. People have been just the opposite of that. They've been extremely supportive. Uh, yeah, it's never been an independent brand, but as you acknowledged, it, it's been a brand that existed for some time. And by the way, since you mentioned it, although I had something to do with the creation of the Buzz Burbank persona, uh, Don Geronimo had quite a lot to do with that, uh, especially the name itself. Uh, and I don't know if you're familiar with the story behind that name or not. I've heard uh, it, but if this would be a great right. time to repeat it. If it, well, then I'll, I'll, I'll keep Please. it short for those of you who are familiar with it already. Uh, Don had used the name Buzz Burbank. He, it was a name that came to him, that he entertained him greatly. Uh, and he used it to uh, tiptoe around on the Internet in chat rooms to see what people were saying about his show. 
uh, which is a smart thing to do. He's a very, very smart programmer. And uh, so he was looking, uh, and it was a way to sort of skulk around and see what people were saying. Uh, he also had said to himself, if he ever needed another air name besides Don Geronimo, that he would use Buzz Burbank. Well, it just never came up. But then I showed up at the Don and Mike show in December of 91, I believe. And uh, we needed a name for me because there was already a Mike on the show. And although I had gone by Mike or Michael throughout my long career of doing radio news, uh, they, it just wasn't going to fly in that situation. So he named me Buzz Burbank. I didn't like the name at first because Buzz to me sounds like an astronaut with a crew cut. And it just, I just had sort of had this image of what Buzz looks like. But a very famous then, astronaut. Yeah, actually. And, and one with, which, with whom I'd be proud to be associated, but, uh, it just didn't sound like me. So I, I wasn't thrilled about it at first, but it, it quickly grew on me. And now I answer to, to all of my names and, and I'm very, very happy to be Buzz Burbank. It's, it's, the name has been very, very good to me. But Don also helped create the persona a little bit, uh, the, the ladies' man image and some of the other things that have come with it. These were things that Don fostered as well as, as, well as my own contributions to that. Uh, you know, so I'll always be grateful to him for, uh, for helping to create that persona and for sort of holding me up and making a big deal out of me uh, in a way that... Uh, he basically told people, like this guy, I like this guy, you should like this guy too. And uh, that's an endorsement uh, not to be taken lightly. Did you know Don before 91? Oh, yeah, absolutely. He and I worked together in Chicago in the mid-80s, early to mid-80s, uh, at another CBS station, WBBM-FM, B96. It Big was station. A top 40 station. Top 40 station where I heard Ger Geronimo say one day uh, over the lip of a record, all the same songs, just in a different order. That's the secret to our success. <laughs> and and that made me laugh. And it, it struck me as being very Letterman-esque and, and it gave me great respect for him as an entertainer uh, and as a mind. And, and so we became friends and hung out together back in that day. And uh, when I was looking for work in December of, in the, the November and December of 91, Geronimo said, we've just landed at WJFK. Come on down and join us. And I did. Wow, what a ride that was. I uh, I always admired Don. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I know he's had some uh, on-air issues where sometimes he, he, he very fast-tempered, very angry, very quick to form an opinion. And sometimes people get turned off by that and other things. But he just always seems so naturally funny and clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll always enjoyed that. Always, always wondered, you know, what else he could be doing out there besides, you know, radio. There's probably well, a he's lot. done he's done a little TV, and I and I'm sure he'd like to do more. I, I'm 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 sure that he's far from uh, having accomplished everything that that he'd like to accomplish as well. But he's done quite a lot, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, that as far as that edge that you referred to, uh, that that was part of his appeal as well. A lot of people like that uh, mercurial quality. Uh, because you knew it meant that on his show anything could happen at any time. And, uh, you know, the, everybody uses and overuses and has passed the use of the expression, uh, keeping it real. Well, that's Don's been doing that uh, since the 80s. I mean, he's really, that that's what he does. And, and I think that was one of the appeals of the show as well. Uh, so uh, you're here. Give us a little sense of behind the scenes at the Don and Mike show. How How much of the chaos is organized? How much of it was 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 uh, was random, and where you know, obviously you would come in and do the news, but you were always there. It's you know, in the radio of the mind, you know, as I'm listening, I'm always mm -hmm. imagining that you're, you know, maybe you're, you know, you're in a news booth uh, separated from them because you're probably getting stuff together at the time. But you're, it seems like it, you're you're always just a heartbeat away from from dropping in on a conversation, being part of things. Give, right. us a, give us a sense of, you know, behind the scenes of the old Don Mike show. Well, my level of involvement varied at different times during the course of the, of, uh, during the run of the show. Uh, there were months and years where I really was sort of in, in a separate room and, and working and focused on the show. Uh, there were many years where, but, but really the majority of the time I was, a microphone was available and left open to me at all times. And, and a lot of times I would be sitting at the keyboard writing my news and this microphone would be right here and I would have the headphones on. And so I would be working, but I would also be listening to Don and Mike. Now, the cool thing about that was in my mind was that a lot of people who were listening to the Don and Mike show were also working at their jobs and listening sort of in the same way that I was. 
I had the advantage of having an open microphone. <laughs> so if I heard something that I could or wanted to respond to or had a reaction to, I could just speak it as I continued to work. And, and it strikes me that sometimes those were the funniest things that I said either accidentally or on purpose uh, were because they were just these natural reactions to what I was hearing uh, from, from Don and Mike. Uh, but Don urged me, invited me, nay, urged me to, to jump in, uh, you know, whenever he, if he felt, I felt I, that I, I had something for mm-hmm. him. So that, that worked out very well, and uh, that was fun to be able to do. And that's sort of where the taking pot shots from the bushes thing started that, that I became semi-famous for. Did so, I mean you? It was just interesting the, the way you were describing that. You were kind of the voice of of the audience then. They it, everything was going on between Don and Mike, and sometimes Rob or whoever would you know. But but you're there. You've got the open microphone at any given time. You you could you could pipe I, up. I, I had the, the the listener's microphone. Yeah, I mean I it's it, I hate to overblow it, but to a large degree that's kind of what it was. I was. It was a chance for the listener to respond where they might not have otherwise, because I like to think that in many cases, not all of them, but in many cases, I was reacting the way a lot of listeners would react to what I'd heard. But it, but the difference was you could hear my reaction. It, it, there's been a lot of uh, thought in more recent years. You know, we ran through in the 80s and 90s. There was a whole lot. There, the, the, the the morning zoo was the big concept, mm-hmm. and and right. the, the Don and Mike show was sort of a, a an element of that. It wasn't quite as you know, it didn't have all. It, you know, we didn't have to break for the for the weather all the time and the traffic. Right. But there was still an element of that. And I was thinking, uh, I'm in Tampa, where the zoo pretty much started with Q105 and mm-hmm. Scott Shannon, Cleveland Wheeler, and right. th- there was a there was a guy there, uh, uh, Roger Schulman, who was basically the Buzz Burbank of 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 that show, as you are, you know, with Don and Mike. And right. my feeling would be that uh, that. Um, uh, markets that did not have a show like this, that didn't have a <laughs> couple of guys who were just out of their out of their minds, and as you say, you know, it could it could get out of hand at any moment. And then you you have this news person, and in some places, it was, I'm sure there was a woman. Um, right. right. It it just it added it, it adds flavor to the market. I think it adds flavor to the to your your afternoon drive, whatever it may be. Uh, Texture and contrast. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, to have that sort of voice of reason uh, it, along with the, the, the wacky guys, uh, it makes a good mix. It really does, I think, anyway. I, I find it very entertaining. Um, now, at the top of this show, in the introduction, I, qu- <laughs> I quoted from uh, a story that you did. I think it was just yesterday. Um, you, you did verbatim. I was, I was uh, shocked and impressed all at the same time. I'm a good transcriber. That's all it is. <laughs> um, what I wondered is, in, in listening to that, and before that, there was actually a, where did I put it? There was another line that I liked, but I, I dropped from the introduction. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were talking about the, uh, the uh, I think it's a dental hygienist. Uh, yes. Who, uh, who was fired. It was a great, it's a great story. She was fired because um, the dentist that she worked for supposedly was afraid that he he would start an affair with her they'd worked together for five years it turned out it was his wife put pressure on him to fire the woman there's no law yeah. against it and so you say sadly there are no laws to protect the beautiful <laughs> Just, <laughs> that's right so someday perhaps bob but, you know <laughs> for now you and i have no protection <laughs> <laughs> right. it is now it's perfectly legal to discriminate against the beautiful <laughs> so yeah I, I I got nothing to worry about on any hand. I I, as I believe I added to that, uh, words to the effect that we're just going to have to live with right. the birds. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, you've done a million of these stories over the years, right? right? right. Uh, do you are there any that stand out in your mind where you've kind of you've taken you've got the facts, you, you're presenting the uh, facts, but where you right. you added that zing at the end, that that Buzz Burbank moment uh, that stand out for you? Oh, uh, I don't know that I have a favorite punchline. Um, and I don't want to give away too many trade secrets, but there are uh, sometimes it's just how you write the story. If you write really short sentences, sometimes one or two word sentences, uh, that can that can be very funny. And then it goes to the the timing and the delivery uh, of the story. The funniest story I ever did was not because of any talent that I brought to the preparation of the story, but it was the story itself. And the story lives in infamy on uh, the internet. And it was from, 
I believe it is from the Mike O'Mara Show podcast. In fact, I'm certain of it. Uh, this was a most famous moment where I did a story about, uh, it was about a, a, a camp, of a community, a town, really, of dwarves in China. So uh, to start with, you're starting the, the tableau with which we're working is Chinese dwarves. And they just already see you're off, off to an amusing start. And it just got funnier after that as we talked about their little houses and the fire department and the little fire trucks and, and all of the things that serve this really uh, very real village in China. Uh, and, and we just, uh, we lost it. We, we laughed. Uh, I laughed. Uh, the other guys in the room laughed. And the hilarity, it's almost one of those moments from The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson where it's just so funny that it's infectiously funny and you can't help but laugh with it. So sometimes, I, I, you know, what I do is so subject to the material that's available on any given day. Mm -hmm. uh, not entirely reliant on it. Sometimes I take stories that are mildly amusing. I like to think I make them funnier uh, without changing any of the facts. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just all in, it's the telling of the story uh, that can be amusing sometimes. And so I have a lot of fun with that. I can't at the moment think of any particular sort of punchline or ending to a story that, that stands out above all the others. I have a lot of favorites. Uh, and, you know, not all of them are home runs. Again, uh, I'm st uh, solely subject to the material that's available on any given day. So, uh, Buzz, did you, ter did you start out as a, as a broadcast guy, as a news guy? What? <clears throat> yeah, I did, as a matter of fact. Uh, it was, I'll be honest, it was the easiest way to get into radio. It was the easiest way to, without any prior experience, get a job uh, broadcasting on the radio station I grew up listening to. It was a top 40 AM station. That was the number one station in my hometown back in the day. FM existed but hadn't become widespread, as widespread in cars as it is now. Mm -hmm. uh, it was that we were very close. I'm, I'm, it might be maybe a year or two before that happened uh, that, that I'm enjoying that sort of uh, high profile through AM radio. But it was the top 40 station I grew up listening to. These were the DJs I listened to, and now I'm working with them. And I was very excited about that. And like I said, it was a way to get on the radio quickly uh, without any prior experience. And I did have a knack for it. I mean, my first newscast was pretty good, I think, uh, at least the, the, the reading of it and the, the delivery of it. And uh, it, it caught on very quickly. Uh, and uh, the other thought I would add to that is I became interested in the news as I was doing it. And I realized, hey... Uh, this stuff is very important to our lives. And I also remembered from very recent experience at that time that when I was riding around in cars with my friends, that when the news came on, we turned it off <laughs> or we switched to another station. And I swore to myself that I was going to, without perverting the news, find a way to attract and keep people's attention for what I felt was very, very important information. So I, I strove to make the news more interesting, if I possibly could. Uh, and and uh, that's where the sort of crafting and writing of stories started, whether it's a, a story about Chinese dwarves or a story about sequester. Well, and, and now, I mean, so many people get their news from a slightly different source. They're Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, the Daily Show is big. Uh, the Colbert right. Report, uh, right. Buzz Burbank News and Comment. I mean, you know, it's you. Mm -hmm. The facts are the same, but the mm -hmm. presentation is, is what is what matters. And and yeah, you know, because we know people are just not they're you know they're not reading newspapers like they used to. Uh, right. There's not a lot of. I think uh, uh, New York and uh, Washington still have 24-hour radio news operations, but there aren't a lot of them out there. And so, you know, right. people get their news where, where we can give it to them. And it's funny. I mean, I still, I recently, Bob, I got a couple of letters from people as I was starting this. I, like I said, people have been terribly supportive uh, about this. And I got a couple of letters from people who, uh, their stories were basically, I, I never listened to news. I never cared about news until I heard you do it. <laughs> well, oh, man, you, you can't say a nicer thing than that. That is so touching. And so gratifying because then you know well, well gosh I, I may be doing something good here well i'm looking at the clock and i got a couple of things i want to ask you about before we have to let sure. you go i, I want to come back to the to, to the don and mike show for a minute um sure. and I, I mentioned at the top that my 
listening to it was always based on the local station carrying it, and especially in Tampa, mm-hmm. where right. the guys were always fighting with the program directors here, and it was get, <laughs> yeah. they were yanking the show, or he was yanking. Oh, it was just crazy. But right. one of the things I always wondered about the show was kind of the boys' club on the show. Um, when I first started listening, unless I'm unless my memory is hazy, and it's possible, it seemed to me that the show had both a female producer and a female sidekick at the time. Uh, n- n- you're close. Okay. Uh, we did have a female producer uh, when I first arrived at the show, and that was Diana Silman. And That's she it. was yeah. marvelous. She was wonderful. We had a female producer uh, later on in uh, Lisa Herndon Broyhill. Uh, and and uh, so there were a couple of times that we had female producers. And then, of course, we had Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, That's it's, two. <laughs> it's a joke. It's just a joke. Everybody settle down. Uh, well, if he wouldn't, if he if he'd stop wearing the skirts and the wigs, it wouldn't. <laughs> sorry, sorry. And, and then uh, I don't know about sidekick. We had a, a female traffic reporter for a while. Maybe that's it. Cherry, Cherry Elliker, who was with us for a, a brief period of time. So uh, yeah, there were there were a few ones, but it mostly was a, a boys' club or sausage fest, as it has sometimes been referred. Well, and so that's yeah. I, Sherry, I think, is who I remembered, and I I didn't I just remembered her. I didn't remember the the traffic role, yeah. but I remember she interacted quite a bit with Don. Um, yeah, for a while. Huh? Yeah. So because of that, it seemed like as as women, and I don't I I guess I didn't hear it when Lisa was involved with the show because the name is not mm-hmm. familiar. And I, I I try to keep track of that kind of stuff, but um, it seemed like because of that, because it was a sausage fest, because it was always the guys. When Don's wife would call in over the years, Frida mm-hmm. would call right. in. It would. I always felt like it. It changed, not in a bad way, but it changed the the the, the type of show <laughs> it was. You you got a sense that this crazy guy, this insane guy, radio guy. <laughs> actually had a human side he had a kid he had a wife he was right. like you and me but there's a joke in uh, a wc fields movie my favorite wc fields movie is called it's a gift it's the one studio it's the one movie the studio let him make his way and uh in in that movie there's a scene where uh, fields takes his daughter aside in the kitchen and he's she's asking him she's saying uh, dad i, I but i don't want to move to california or whatever it is and 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 he says to her I make the rules around. I make the rules around. <laughs> and it was his way of, of, you know, of hiding from his wife, uh, who was in the other room. And 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 so when Frida called the show, it was a little like mom was suddenly in the room, or your 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 wife, or somebody you needed to answer to. Uh, she was uh, the voice of reason when uh, this voice of reason got drowned out uh, a lot of times. And and. You know, he would listen to mommy. He would, he would, Don would, you know, if Frida called and said, hey, you know, too far, whatever. And yeah, for a, for a minute, it changed the dynamic, uh, but only for that period of time uh, that, that she was with us. And, uh, uh, you know, and in a good way, I think. I think, I think when she did those things, they, they were necessary. Mm-hmm. I think it was time, you know, for somebody to step in and police that. And, and that's sort of the, the function that Frida did in a wonderful, delightful, warm-hearted way. Well, and, and he always ended, I, the thing I always remember is the way that he would end the calls with her. I love you, love you, you know. Right. The very, I mean, you just, whatever right. they had talked about, and well, it, it could have been anything. Good. Yeah, it goes back to keeping it real. I yeah. mean, uh, it was, uh, the, you know, the, the, this was a real peak at his life. When you saw him angry, he was angry. And when you saw him uh, uh, lamb-like, he was lamb-like. Uh, and and uh, that just uh, that makes a wonderful texture for a show as well. And then I, I have to ask you, because, I, you know, I, I don't think that we had the show at the time. I think I heard about it secondhand. Do you remember what you were doing and where you were when the news came came in about about Frida? car accident which was horrifying uh i had just come out of a movie at a a nearby mall and it was a hot summer day not unlike this one in fact i think we're very close uh maybe just a little past the anniversary day of frida's passing uh and it was just uh, shocking and unexpected and and uh, and as horrible as it as it was in its own right we had no idea how much it would change things for all of us forever and it did, right? I mean, I, I yeah, yeah, it did. It, it did. It well, obviously. I mean, it goes without saying that this is was uh, extremely difficult for Don. He took a leave of absence. Uh, uh, when he returned, things were not the same. He found that uh, 
his coworkers who were, who were part of this family with him and Frida uh, just reminded him too much of of the life that he just lost. And he found it necessary to start a new life. And I, I understand that and I support that. And uh, he he has uh, started a new life and has been very successful with it. But it did it did it was a huge impact uh, for for all of us. It it changed everything. I remember hearing about it and just it, the. the it, it was just horrifying, you know, and, and, and she wasn't a, like a, a, a full member of, of that show, but you felt like you knew her. You listened to her and all the she time. Was, she was Don's other half, which made her a very big part of the show, even when she wasn't on the air with him. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and I hate to lump these two things together, uh, but the, the, the Janet Jackson thing and the indecency uh, effect, that, that, the effect that had on a so-called indecency in broadcasting afterward, was a huge punch to the gut, and uh, the passing of Frida was uh, an even harder blow. Mm. And uh, those were two very tough blows to take consecutively and expect to keep uh, doing what we had been doing. And we had done it, frankly, for a very, very long time. So you you take something that that already had a lot of miles on it, and it was no reason to think it wouldn't keep going. Many times uh, people predicted the demise of the Donna Mike show, and it never happened. Mm. Uh, it did finally, after many, many, many years, uh, because of uh, two big things that happened, both of which had a, a huge effect on the show. Uh, but, you know, I, I'm very proud of the fact that, that we all went on, mm-hmm. that we all found ways to keep it going. Uh, in Don's absence, when Don returned and, and then when Don left again, uh, you know, we we just all kept going because I guess in show business that's what you do. It's interesting. There was... There's this magic with those with those guys with that cast. Mm-hmm. I, I've tr- I've listened at times to the podcast, the the the, the Michael Mara podcast. I've mm-hmm. listened to Don's uh, Don for people who may have lost track of this. He's out in Sacramento. He's at a sports station. I think he's doing Afternoon Drive. And the yeah, uh, mid middays now. Middays, I think. okay. Yeah. And right. uh, there is a podcast version of the Don Geronimo show. You can listen yes. to it on right. iTunes and and such. And I. You know, I just, I hate to say it, but I've tried listening to both shows, and for someone who, for years, just really enjoyed the two together with you and Rob, and mm-hmm. it just doesn't have the same, alone, the guys don't have the same spark for me. But I, I and I, in the same breath, I want to say that if you did not have the experience of them together, listening right. to them separately, I'm prob- I'm sure is just as much fun. It's just, it's, right. you, 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 in my head, I'm always comparing the, the experience. Well, and the other thing that happened, uh, and another big blow to radio in general and guy talk radio, uh, it was the economy. Mm. Uh, sure. And uh, the economy hit, and suddenly you have these shows that have this tremendously high overhead. You've got five, six people on a show. It's a lot of salaries to pay. And because some of us had been in the business for quite some time, these were not small salaries. Mm. So it was this tremendous overhead. And, and and then, of course, there's the weasel factor. Uh, the, the broadcast executives invest who uh, know nothing about show business, uh, all, but all they saw was overhead uh, that they felt must be cut at any cost, including driving away the audience. Uh, WJFK right now is a very financially successful radio station. They're making money over there for CBS and good for them. The sad news is they're in something like 27th place in the rating. Uh, but CBS doesn't care anymore right. about being 27th in the ratings. They're fine with that so long as they can make money. This changed slash ruined radio. Uh, th- this is why Don can't have a bigger show than he has now. Radio doesn't have the budget for it. This is why there is no Don and Mike show. This is why there is no Mike O'Mara show. This is why Don and Mike are no longer together. Radio can't afford it and or believes it can't afford it, whether that's true or not. Uh, those days, at least for now, are over. Mm. And uh, this is a very, very sad thing because, my goodness, what a wonderful time that was for radio. And, again, I am so proud to have been a part of that time. So lucky. Uh, just yeah, it makes me very happy to have been a part of that time. Well, so let's, let's bring it all around back to Buzz Burbank, News and Comment. Um, what is your vision of this show that you're doing? You're doing right now. You're doing five days a week, I think, right? About the uh... right, Monday through Friday. It's a free uh, podcast download from iTunes, and it's on RSS and and uh, SoundCloud and Stitcher and I Google, the Google Play Store, and wherever else you can get these things. 
Uh, and, and I'm very excited about that. I, I Like I said, I'm, I'm loving the dickens out of doing this show. It runs uh, 10 or 15 minutes, between 10 and 15 minutes. I've got a little, it may tighten up. We may, we may pick a time one of these days, but right now it kind of floats anywhere between 11 and 14 minutes, mm-hmm. uh, this, this daily podcast. And it's, it's all the day's real news and some feature stories that I hope are well told. Uh, and uh, and entertaining and amusing and sometimes shocking and I like evoking all kinds of emotions: uh, anger, sadness, happiness, laughter. Uh, uh, you know, I I want to I want it to be a roller coaster ride, and I, I think it has been, and I, I enjoy that very much. I want to keep doing that. Uh, I, I hope to get that on some radio station. Um, in addition to that, I, I want to do some talk shows. I miss doing interviews very much. Uh, I loved doing that. I think. Again, I'm pretty good at that, and I would like to, to, to do that some more. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing a panel show. The trick is finding time to do all these things. And like I said, I'm working on a couple of TV projects and, and a couple of other things that, you know, we just we hope work out. Uh, but I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> good. And we'll see what happens. But like I said, it's nice to have the freedom to pursue these things. Now. I'd like to see you doing uh, Buzz, uh, Buzz Burbank News and Comment as video. I think... I think since you're you're starting out at this point, you should just do it as video and then offer yeah, the audio. Yeah, maybe now maybe you can give me some professional advice on this, Bob, because here's my right. Because I'm the I, professional in this conversation. I no no yeah you know you are, <laughs> and here's why because we we talked about this a little bit before we did this interview. Uh, my concern is uh, when I record the daily podcast, don't tell anyone, but sometimes I screw up, no. and I ha- and yeah no I do, and then but I have the luxury then of going back and editing out the screw up so it sounds. Hmm. When, I, when it goes out there. Uh, I, if I do video, and, I, and we've talked about this, we probably are going to do video, but it terrifies me. I love to be on camera. It's not that. It terrifies me because now I'm going to have to not screw up anymore. So if you, if you can figure out a way, either that or I need to learn how to edit the video. I haven't decided which. But still, I think you know some people want it live. We, to answer your question, short answer, yeah, we're going to do video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we, we should talk sometime about the video. You can do the video and, and, uh, you know, and get by. You can edit the video. It's not that hard. I right, learned. Right, that's true. Plus, I, we've decided also that there might be some fun in seeing me screw up so <laughs> well and and you know what i could show you right here on my own script where it says but the last thing i wanted to ask you about was screw-ups and bloopers and stuff and i wondered if uh, you know we sort of touched on it before but you know do you, do you have a favorite uh uh i i have a favorite story about something that i shouldn't have said it's sort of it's sort of a, it's sort of a blooper it's not something that got edited out okay uh and and when i'm doing my daily news shows uh, you know usually it's just, I, I stumble over a word and so i'll restart the sentence and it's there's nothing terribly entertaining about that but i, I if i may tell this story of, about a blooper it was on the don and mike show and our guest was uh the daughter uh, you, you know, the, the movie Mommy Dearest, we loved very much because it's it's a, sort of a black comedy. It's a very dark comedy about uh, Joan Crawford. And we had Joan Crawford's daughter. Christina. On the Don and Mike show. Christina, damn it. We had, as, as, as her mom says in the movie, uh, we had Christina on the show. And uh, Don had this ability to push a button or push buttons so that it would... The, the the listener, the radio listener, would still hear our voices, Don's, Mike's, mine, but the person on the phone, even though we were still connected with them, would not hear our voices. And Don took his and Mike's mic off the phone line, but he forgot to take mine <laughs> off. And so Christina Crawford heard me when I said, because she was just going on and on, and just, she was very, very annoying, Bob. I'm telling you, I, I couldn't, you know, she was just... And, and at one point, I couldn't help it. And so thinking that I was only talking to Don and Mike in the audience and not to Christina, I said, geez, no wonder her mom didn't like her. <laughs> <laughs> at which point, at which point and that was a blooper, at which point uh, Christina uh, terminated the interview. Uh, but much to the delight of Don and Mike, who thought it was perhaps <laughs> one of the funnier things that had ever happened. And coming from me, because I'm just never, I was never the cruel one. You right. know, I was known for being nice <laughs> and never saying anything hurtful. And uh, this was just brutally uh, hurtful that, that I said uh, to her. I mean, I'm sure she's fine. But uh, <laughs> just to, to, to say that, and, and I didn't realize she, she was, that she was able to hear so that to me, that's the funniest blooper. Well, and I, I, that gives me an excuse to mention this uh, website. Um, 
the uh, the uh, many of the uh, old archives from the Don and Mike show are still mm-hmm. online. That's what I hear. That's, there's a site <laughs> called PaintYourBaldSpot.com, right? Uh, I've heard of which, it. Yeah. Which which picked up the old Don and Mike. I don't know. I don't remember the exact domain. It was Don and Mike Radio Show dot com or something like that. Anyway, they've combined it. So if you go to paintyourbaldspot.com, which is <laughs> which is a great Larry King reference, and you can <laughs> right. you, folks, you can go figure that one out. Um, right. You can hear if, if you know where to look. You can hear a lot of these great moments, and I just mm-hmm. I'll use this opportunity to point it out. But most importantly, folks, yeah, you can hear my guest's new daily podcast, Buzz Burbank News and Comment at buzzburbank.com, or as he said, it's on Stitcher. Uh, it's on iTunes. You can you can subscribe to it via RSS. It's in the Google Play Store. Pretty much all the places you would find Mr. Media, you can find Buzz Burbank. He's he's following and, and you us. Can, and you can find and you can find me on Facebook as well, which will help lead you to those other things. So that, if that helps, and I appreciate the plug very much. I am Bob, if I may say so again. Very very proud of this product. It's hard work. Uh, it's but it's also a lot of fun, and I I love it, and I'm very proud of it. And I think that if there are people listening and watching us now uh that if they haven't heard it they will not be disappointed if they if they check it out uh i i, they, I can see them even making it a part of their listening habit uh people who are not familiar please please try this because i, I think you'll be very pleased very good well buzz burbank what a pleasure what a what a what a kick for me thank you so much for joining us today on mr media well you're delightful bob thank you for having me You can see and hear almost a thousand Mr. Media interviews by visiting our main site, mrmedia.com, mrmedia.com. Or check out the more than 200 video interviews on the Mr. Media radio site on YouTube. And I'd sure appreciate if you'd show some love for Mr. Media's advertisers, including Stitcher. Apple named Stitcher a top five news app of 2011. It's a free mobile app for your smartphone or tablet that lets you listen to your favorite shows and discover the best of news, entertainment, and sports on demand. You can listen whenever you want to to more than 5,000 shows, get customized recommendations, and discover what your friends are listening to. My own list of Stitcher favorites is pretty eclectic. I start my day with an hour of MSNBC's Morning Joe with Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. Then it's the latest two-minute update from the Onion News Network. After that, I'll listen to WTF with Mark Marin. Here's The Thing with Alec Baldwin, HBO's Real Time with Bill Maher, and excerpts from E's Chelsea Lately and The Soup with Joel McHale. Also in regular rotation on my Stitcher playlist, The BS Report with ESPN's Bill Simmons, The Tech Crunch Headlines, and The Don Geronimo Show. The latest episodes of each show, whether originating from broadcasts, cable TV, radio syndication, or podcasts, are continuously updated. Stitcher is a free app for your iPhone, iPad, Kindle, Fire, Blackberry, Droid, and more. And show your support of Mr. Media by getting, did I mention it's free? The app at stitcher.com slash Mr. Media. That's stitcher.com slash MR Media. Stitcher Smart Radio, the smarter way to listen to radio. We're also supported by Audible. Check out Audible's 30-day trial membership and download the audiobook version of the book everyone's been talking about, Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Sign up for your free trial today at audible.com slash radio. Again, audibletrial.com slash radio. And finally, if you need a disc jockey for a wedding, bar mitzvah, corporate event, or just a big old party please consider calling 1-800-DIAL-DJs, the party authority, for all your party entertainment needs. You can call 1-800-DIAL-DJs or go to their website, 1-800-DIAL-DJs.com, and tell them Mr. Media sent you. And thanks for listening. Along with the beautiful forest creatures, 
make our home with beautiful plant life, clean water, and endless adventures. It's a place to celebrate. So discover the forest with your family today. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you.